Hello everybody, welcome to this new live stream in the series where we are creating an entire game in C from scratch. If you have been following along, you saw the game progress all the way from nothing, and we wrote every line of code you got to see that on stream, and uh, all the way to where it's now, and it's in a great position, if I say so myself. <laughs> uh, let me show you guys the game running first. There you have it. So, last stream we added a lot of uh, improvements, like both in terms of the feel of the game. Oh, and we were testing the sound for the hard and we made every block. <laughs> We made every block give a power up or a power down, should I say? And uh, let's say slow, yeah. Just going to remove that real quickly. And if you go to my YouTube channel, which is YouTube.com/DanZayDan, you can watch the whole series from the very first episode all the way to where we are now. And you can also watch my tutorial series, uh, which is how to program a, a game in C++. And in this tutorial series. It's uh, more focused on beginners, so you can go like a step-by-step -step and see the whole process. This stream is more like a, let's just sit down and program, but I will explain things that we'll come, uh, come up against, I should say. And if you want to download the source code for free, you can go to the HIO page, which is dandaydan.h.io. You can download uh, here in the game, you can download every episode's game and the source code, so you can learn and do whatever you want. Okay, yeah, it's been a lot of episodes. I think we are coming to a, a nice place. Now, we finished yesterday's stream uh, with two bigger things in mind to do. First one is the Tetris level, because we, we worked on these four levels for some time, which was the, the original breakout, the super breakout, which has our ups and our downs. Let's see, turning the volume for you guys. Down. And uh, the Pong, and we improved the Pong last stream, and I think it's like way better. See, that was a collision bug, actually, there's that. But uh, the game itself is way better. Really cool. Yeah. We also improved like the ball size and things like that. That was crazy. And the Space Invaders one. I think I'm, I'm gonna change the player's sound a bit. I think it's maybe too loud and too deep. Yeah. But uh, okay, so let's start doing the, the Tetris one. Hey Marcus, how are you doing, man? Nice to see you here. Oh, main advances. Dude, yes, we we worked on the game for, I mean, now we have like a locked consistent frame rate, have an awesome menu. We worked on the Pong game mode last time, we have like better looking ball and better looking uh, sounds, also better sounding sounds. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. And uh, today we're going to work on a new level. That's going to be really, really cool, I think. Before we do that, I'm just going to set the player movement sound. Let's see. Let's change the volume down a bit. Let's add uh, the pitch a little bit. Let's see. Okay. Maybe the volume is still too loud. So. Oh, in fact, I should just keep that maybe 2.5. Multiply that by, by a smaller number. Let's see. I really like the way it is now, I think. 
Maybe I can even increase this guy a little bit. To just... Maybe this guy as well. Doing like 0.1 plus the range. Yeah. yeah I think that's better. So let's do the, the Tetris level. The idea, not entirely sure the idea, but uh, it's basically gonna be like blocks of blocks <laughs> and they're gonna come down smoothly and maybe rotate? Not sure. And I think they're going to keep... Uh, I'm not entirely sure how I want this level to be. Let's just start playing around with it. So let's do, let's see, faders. Oh, the law of the invaders, yeah. Make this the last level? Probably. We change. Well, the names are all wrong now. Let's make like three uh, Tetris. And I think that will be the correct order. Okay. Now, there are a few things we want to do. First of all, we want to set a color to the level. And I found a pretty cool website, let me see if I can, uh, that has like tons of color, uh, color palettes. Um, let me see, yeah, that's the one. So, well, if you can load, yeah. So you can get like an interesting color palette for the Tetris level. It's supposed to be really co colorful. Let's try a colorful. Um, yeah, maybe maybe this combination, like the background. Let's try this one. Uh, E2, C499 for the background. Well, I'm not sure which one is which now. Arena color. Okay, so um, E2, do E2, C4. Nine, nine. And then let's do E8, A7, 35. Let's see, and we should probably also in the menu have to add the name. Menu text colors, level names. Okay, and let's do the Tetris. Um, and we should we should also have to add like uh, invalid. Let's see here. No. Here, yeah. Um, let's just copy the pong guy for now. Invalid. Yeah, I think that'll be enough. Let's. See. Nice. Well, these colors are really blinding. Oh my god. Yeah, the problem was the green. The green contrast with this color was... Uh, was <laughs> we don't want to relax him. Um, maybe we're gonna try these two colors. This one for the background, ADBD 9E. Let's see. ABD 9E, and let's do 89DA59. Let's see. Okay. Um, maybe I should, I should, yeah, I have like darker colors for one. Yeah, I think I'm gonna try a darker color for the inside. Let's just divide everything by two. So B should be like six, nine, something like that. Nine should be like 49, approximately. Let's see. Okay, this is better. Okay, like that. Now, let's think. Let's just pull up a Tetris. 
reference. What are we working on? Uh, we're doing a game in C from scratch. And this is what we have so far. And I've been live streaming the entire process. So, it started out as a breakout clone. But then we had a couple of cool mechanics, like the first one. Nice font. Yeah, we did that by hand. <laughs> Dude, just... <laughs> it's funny of you to say that. Because that's the font. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there you have it. <laughs> and the reason we did that, before you guys make a lot of fun of me, is to get this animation right here on the uh, bottom text. Can you see that? The moving colors. I mean, we could have done that in other ways by using like two bitmaps and one masking the other one. But this one, it was kind of easy and it was, you know, it's kind of kind of cool as well. Crazy stuff. Yeah, well, so yeah. And then we added power-ups. So let's see if we can get like power-up. Going back to what we are creating, so this is the coolest part of the meteor, the comet. Yeah, then we collected a couple of powers. And these are powered down, so if we if we hit these, uh, we have bad attacks now. Now the blocks are strong, so we can't can't hit them. Yeah, okay, now we're back to it. Nice, nice man. Okay. And then we added the cool things. I wonder how you did, how you did that. In the font, you mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was really that was really funny. <laughs> uh, so the basic idea of the game is that what if like older arcade games? Dude, nice, nice one. Then I celebrated and lost. <laughs> what if older arcade games were like breakout? So you have like a breakout pong. And then we have like breakout space invaders. This one is pretty cool. Each one has its own particular thing. Yeah, awesome. And now we are about to create. Breakout Tetris. So yeah, that's what we're gonna what we're gonna do. Let's let's look at a Tetris reference. Let's see. Just for us to get some shapes. I mean it shouldn't be that hard. Right? But uh let's see, is that the original one? Tetris effect. Well, these are classics, right? This one. And this one. So let's do the two of them. I think we're gonna do the same thing as I did with the invader, uh, which is the same thing I did for the software rendering and writing text, to be honest. Uh, oops, yeah, okay, this is right. Which is a uh, sort of level invader. Yeah, we have a spawn invader. And uh, let's do like a spawn. Well, maybe we can do it directly that on the Tetris level. Tetris. Okay. Which is going to create a few blocks. Let's see. Yeah, get next available block, set the life, set the offset. Let's see. And the color and the speed multiplier. Okay, that's. That's about right, so that's what we need. Let's just see what we have if we are. Uh... Okay, I'm gonna close an open forecoder because I, uh, I lost the reference of the position of the uh, of the compiler buffer. I think it's gonna be just easier to close that again. Okay, now let's go back to the Tetris level. Um, okay, let's do, maybe I'm going to try for bigger blocks this time. Yeah, 
Route of P. Mm. Let's not worry about that for now. Let's not worry about that. And that. And the color. I'm gonna have to play around with the color. We'll probably make a random color. Yeah. Random int in range 0, 255. We'll probably make brighter colors, let's say 100, 255. Yeah. I think that'll look nice. Well, <laughs> I don't know. I have to experiment a little bit with that. And the bot speed multiplier, I'm not going to do anything. No. So uh, convert from int to u8. Do those by hand. Okay. Let's see if we get like we should have like just one block. Can we do? I kind of like the size. I think this is gonna be cool. So, um, let's do a uh, shapes array. Which should be pretty much the same thing as the text. Uh, we're doing the rendering. Let's see. Uh, yeah, this guy. It has a, a fixed height though. Hmm. Let's let's try. Okay, and uh, so let's make like every shape. You can try three by three. So the first one is this one, and the other one is the is like. This one. Yeah, I just did the two of them for now. Uh, I'm gonna do shapes. Okay. Maybe this would be a timed level. Or maybe not. Hmm, I don't know about that. You know what? I think this is gonna be a global. I call that Tetris shapes. Tetris, and then we're going to do like spawn shape. Spawn Tetris shape. We're gonna pass a number, so we're gonna spawn the first one. Yeah. Okay, kind of like that. And uh, this is going to be done in the shape. So this is going to spawn a type of shape. Uh, spawn type of shape. Okay. And I'm going to get like a shape. It's going to be Tetris shape. It's an index index okay then we can do like for let's call that tetris shape height three okay and and for every guy we should go through the whole thing so uh, shape i yeah uh no is this correct no this is wrong i should really i should really, uh, let me see how i'm doing with the letter uh get letter index Yeah, okay, so this is what we do. I'm just going to copy that. Because this is the thing, once you think about <laughs> one problem once, you can really 
make it like really faster by just not thinking about it again, unless you need to, which is okay. Now, uh, let's see, we're gonna run for text height and uh, same thing here. And whenever we do here, let's do the get the next available block thing. Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to set the relative P to the P, whatever that is. Okay. And uh, let's see. And let's see, where are we setting the P? Well, maybe you we can just set that to zero for now. Okay, index, typo, first typo of the night. Letter, B shape. Okay, so we should really add like a uh, block block half size let's make that I'm gonna try a little bit larger than what we tested with before and this I'm going to add uh, should they be stuck together maybe maybe I'm gonna add a little bit of spacing yeah spacing is at point one. So we set the block, then we set the Y to the block. Let's say block half size X times two plus the spacing. And then we do the same thing for the Y. Okay. Um, yeah, we're gonna do this. We need the original X. P dot x and let's do this shape height minus one for a code is that some some kind of vim like editor yeah uh, it's more like an emax like editor but that's the basic idea so I'm, I'm writing the code in for coder and I'm gonna run it on, on Visual Studio Yeah, but uh, I really like Forcoder. You can get the free version, and it's pretty complete, I think. No need to set the colors or the next color. Uh, I'm gonna am I'm gonna create the random color here. So color. So for every block, they're gonna have the same color. Oh, let's do like make color. Um. Yeah. Um, Okay, now let's see what we have. Okay, I think that was a huge success. And our first try, well, yeah, we just forgot to delete. This guy, we don't need that anymore. Yeah, that was exactly what we needed. Well, this color is kind of boring. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna get like mm, random co uh, color. Okay, it's gonna be pretty bright. Yeah, and then let's do like uh, color. I'm gonna do like let's do uh, int choice. And get a random choice, choice in three. Uh, let's do like, let's do like in six. And uh, let's see if the choice is zero, color will be the random color, then 255 minus the random color. 
and then 255 minus rem for it again. Okay? Then we can do the other variations, like this is for a red brick. Let's try a green brick. Oh, brick is what they're called, I suppose, in a Tetris. <laughs> okay, and then let's do the blue one, which is the same thing, just changed here. And now let's do the two. What? Did I copy? Okay, I did copy. I was just confused. Like two, three. Let's do four, which is going to be orange. Yeah, see, that's. Um, let me do something like this. Okay. Then let's add five, which should be let's see this. You can play around with that a little bit more. Potentially uninitialized variable. Well, we can do it else. Okay. Let's see. Well, that was a pretty boring color. Oh, that was a nice color. Um. Not sure, I like our random though. Random. I think the. Oh, that was blue, right? Yeah, that's green. Let me make like 200, 255. Let's try these colors. Okay, red, 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 red. I suppose our random choice is not working as intended. Random mute to the 32. Oh! Yeah, this is meant to be a bowl. Okay, so I'm gonna do like a random int range. Yeah. Kind of a misremembered how we did the. How we did the random choice thing, so let's do 0 to 5 okay, let's see oh, that's better, way better okay I don't know if we get if we got like these colors. Should be like almost orange, I suppose. I think I'm not going to reset. Yeah, I suppose that crazy red one. I think that's the one. Dude, nice. I'm not sure if we if we already win the game or if we have to do anything else to win the game. Well, it's maybe a bit too hard. Okay, so we do win the game. So we spawn Tetris shape. Okay. Now let's make them move. I want the shapes to move like individually. So I can't see we have like 
we have like the enemy P and the enemy DP for the pawn. The same thing for the invaders. For the Tetris, I think I'm gonna add an array, array of those. Let's say, how many shapes? Maybe 10 shapes. Let's try 10 shapes for now. Enemy. Well, let's call that shape P. I'm gonna add 10 shapes. Same for the DP. Oh, the DP is always going to be the same, right? So, yeah. So, whenever we receive an index, let's see. I'm going to call this shape index. I'm going to receive like a, a uh, shape p index which is a kind of a bad name but that will have to do now in fact i think i'm gonna do this differently instead of setting this guys i think i'm gonna i'm gonna do like this the shape p and uh this is like last shape index so the basic idea, I think, I think that'll be the best call, which is like we have the shape P. Let's see, we have two shapes. Okay, and they have different P's and they're coming down. Let's say these are blocks like zero to zero one two three zero to three, and these are blocks five to seven four. Four, five, six, seven, yeah. In this case, I want to store. Um, yeah, I want to store these guys. So the last shape index. So I'm going to store like three, seven, and the position. Okay. Like if we have two shapes of four blocks each this stores three seven okay yeah I think that'll make sense now we pass the shape index and then we we should set that to the last shape and then let's return uh, returns the last so, yeah, okay, which is, well, should really be the, the, the next, let's see, get next available block, let's see, maybe if we can just set the, uh, that? the num blocks, so I don't need to return that, okay. Now whenever we spawn Tetris shape, we spawn the shape, then let's do like next shape. And then we set, let's see the level state the Tetris dot we have the next shape here. Okay. But we also have the last shape index at this position. It's going to be the num blocks minus one zero one two three yeah uh, I, I don't like how this turned out maybe maybe I'm think I'm gonna structure I think I'm gonna change the way we did the audio penny that turned out pretty well. I think I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do the same thing for the for the block. So in the block we have a relative p and a p. Let's have like a master uh, like a parent p. 
and that'll be a pointer, and it can be null. It can be null. Okay. So whenever we spawn the block, like get block, get next available block. Maybe I should zero the block. Yeah. So the block's gonna be the zero oh. block zero. Let's just see if we broke anything by zeroing the blocks. looks fine. Uh, okay, now we have the blocks and they have now a pointer to the guy. So whenever we go to the game, you know, like update, let's see, balls, update power blocks, render balls, wall movement, drop HUD. So whenever we got like a pointer to a block. Here we, we simulate the block for the level. So simulate block for level. So I don't think we're gonna need this. Oh we do. Because we may Yeah, we do need need this, but we don't need this addition. Yeah, so the block P in this case I'm gonna see like if we have a parent P the block P will be the relative P plus the parent P. And if we don't, well then we just do the relative. We dig for struct. You are correct, compiler, as always. Nice. Now, at this point, we don't need to do this. Well, I suppose we do it. Yeah. This is kind of a copy and paste. Okay. Now we probably broke the movement. Yeah, we broke the movement. And now whenever we start the Pong game, for instance, just here, we let's say create block block. I'm gonna add a new parameter here. Yeah, well enemy P. Should read a V2 I had a, a float pointer. This should be the oh I, no, I think this cracks parent P. And this I'm gonna set the block parent P to the parent P. This guy gets nothing. Oh, we only use in these two situations? Hmm. Well, so Pong. Tetris is gonna work in a second. An invader, let's do the create invader. I'm also going to set the block parent p to level let's see, state invaders dot enemy p. Okay, okay, okay. I liked that. Let's see if it works. It works. Okay. Let's see our breakout. Our super one. Okay, perfect. Now we are in a good position now to in the draw spawn shape. Here. 
here. Here we should also add a uh, shape. Well, let's call that a state shape index, which is also a bad name. Now, in this case, whenever we create the block, I'm going to set the block uh, parent p, which is going to be the Maybe I can pass that directly. Yeah. Let's pass that directly. So v2 parent p. And uh, here I'm going to do the level state dot tetris dot enemy p, enemies p, I suppose. Maybe just enemy p, or we call that shape p. I think we did shape p at zero. Tetris. Oh, we forgot to add that to our guy. So Tetris. Okay. Now we didn't do anything with it yet. Oh, did I misspell it? No, it's right. Now, you know what? I'm not sure, but this may not be necessary at all. I think this is just a huge waste of, uh, waste of time. I'm going to do that differently. I'm just going to add. going to add a uh, spawn Tetris. Although it is a nice cleanup and now we are more powerful if we if we want to do this. Hmm. I think we're gonna end up just setting let's say setting this guy. If we have a parent P we do this I'm gonna do something different for the Tetris. Um, which is just add a constant speed. So, yeah. Um. Okay, I think that's going to be easier. It's the Tetris block P is going to be the relative plus, let's see, 10 units per second. Well, why didn't we do anything? Okay, we also have to set the relative p. Okay, so this is going to be the relative p, and this will just be the block. Yeah. Okay. This is going to be really, really hard, I think. <laughs> yeah, maybe like one mistake would probably be detrimental to the whole thing. So, not sure if it's going to be a nice game mode or not. But Plunk started out as a not just a game mode. Yeah, see? Well, let's start. Let's start like a shape. Level shape. Let's start that at like. Uh, okay, I think 
think that'll be cool. I think that'll be cool. Let's say I'd like 70, maybe 65. Maybe 65 will be enough. Yeah. Well, that collision is super messed up. We're gonna fix that today, hopefully. Let's see. What do you guys think? I don't know. Maybe we should make that slower. It's gonna be hard, bigger, or slower and bigger. That's gonna be pretty hard still. So let's make that. Four. Not sure. I have to iterate on that. Let's also make the menu. Let's do like names. Uh, what's the position? P. First P. Let's do like minus. Seven. Let's paste these guys out. Okay. Good. I think we had a little bit more spacing. That could make that a little bit easier as well. Let's see. Nice. I think I think that'll be cool. So I'm gonna set like an X P X P. I'm gonna set that to zero at the beginning. Maybe we should get like a random shape. I'm thinking. For now, let's keep like this. Okay. Now, what I'm what I want to do is in the win condition. We add the level, and we uh, and we can check at this point. So I'm gonna do like level score. Pre win. Um, well, let's call that level. But if it returns true, I'm going to return. So in the level score changed, like returns if shoot. Well, actually, I don't think I need that. If I add more blocks, this number of blocks is going to change. Well, I'm not sure. Let's see. No, no. The idea is that I'm trying to do is that 
Whenever we score a point, I'm going to, and we are the uh, like this game. I'm gonna see if we are supposed to finish. We're going to spawn another shape. So shape spawn type of shape. Just copy that to a buffer and. Uh, Okay. Okay, I think I liked that. That was kind of stupid. But, uh... Okay, I'm gonna pass. Same thing. Zero zero. So whenever we finish one shape, we should get another shape. Forever. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Okay. I failed. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's way easier to do it like this. You have to try to get a ball 100% lined up, which is cool, I suppose. Hello clone, how are you doing man? Today we're doing the Tetris game mode. Uh, let's see, okay. Nice. A new shape appeared. Nice, that's what we needed. Okay. So I'm gonna spawn a random uh, random F32 in range. I'm gonna do like minus the arena half size. Arena half size X. That's for the first argument. And I'm going to leave a random shape for now. So I'm going to do like random int range, which is zero. And, uh, well, let's see. Then a new haircut. Yes. You know, from time to time, you know, this is my. Um, the way I work with my hair. I let it grow for as long as it's comfortable here in the hot Brazil weather. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and then I cut as short as I'm comfortable with. So I get like the least amount of work relating to hair. So <laughs> I let it grow pretty big, then I cut it really short, then I let it go pretty big again. <laughs> That's like how lazy I am in terms of hair. <laughs> I used to grow my hair long, but that is going away already. Really? How are you, man? <laughs> so at least one day I will have to get haircuts. <laughs> well, but I think you do need to, you know, make sure just on 25. Oh, okay, so you're pretty young as well. <laughs> I have a few friends that are, that are choose to make their, to be bald 100%, and uh, it, you know, it's also hard work, you know, having no hair is also hard work, so I don't know if we're going to be 100% or free in this case. <laughs> shape count, two shapes for now. We can probably rotate the shape, that would be cool as well. Let's see. I think this is gonna be a cool game mode because it'll be, it'll be more chill than the other ones, at least in the beginning. Yeah. Okay. At was no pointer. Yeah, we should really be like minus one. Uh, let's see. Count. Tetris. 
shape. Come. Minus one. New game mode. Yeah, we are doing. Yeah, I'm supposed to. They were supposed to be called game modes in the beginning, but we just called them levels. We're doing the Tetris one. And uh, this is gonna be pretty cool. So we added like a couple new systems. So we could add like, let's see, yeah, nice. So we could add, let's see, oh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be hard. It sounds cool. Yeah, I think it's gonna be a nice one. Because it's gonna be 100% skill dependent. So, like the other ones are pretty, it's good depending as well, but this one's going to be even more. Let's see. Uh, okay, I failed. Let's add. Let's add the, the loose condition. Same thing with this invaders. Let's see. Invaders. Yes. <laughs> let's see invader. What is it called? Oh. Yeah. Here. Um. Simulate level, we go through each. Uh, do invader player collision test. Simulate block. Okay, so same thing for Tetris. We're gonna change the P and... Uh, oh, but it's interesting. We just set lose life in the invaders. Oh, but because this happens a lot, we mm, so this is kind of a hack. We just call lose life, and lose life just you know we should really call game over, I suppose. Mm, well, we could you just do like instant kill? Yeah, that'll do, I think. Okay, now, uh, in this case, if the block P dot Y minus the block half size dot Y, correct? Yes. If that is less than or equal to how much we did the thing? We did, uh, yeah, the player position. In this case, I'm going to lose life. And, oh, actually, this should be insta kill. The two of the, these guys. And this guy should not be insta kill. Neither should this guy. Okay. Um, do we have. That uh, cheat to make the uh, to make the uh, what is it what is it called the DT multiplier DT multiplier just so we can uh, test if we broke something mm. in this case invaders mm. I suppose it'd be hard to test. Unless, unless we do like both of the of these guys. Okay. Let's see. Oh my God! So yeah, <laughs> this is not gonna work. I'm gonna assume it'll work, but uh. Because we didn't do anything too dramatic. Then we can just play the trick. Play the Tetris level. Nice. I think it would be a nice change of pace. I think 
that fail already because that touched me, did it? Did it not? I surely just do nothing. <laughs> well, so much for doing nothing. Do nothing win. Yeah, that, that's like try to do nothing. Almost one! <laughs> oh, almost again! <laughs> well, let's see! Oh! Man, that was so close so many times! Okay, so I failed. <laughs> that would have been great! <laughs> I think. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure the position was 100% though. Let me just test that. Yeah, okay. That was that was good enough. Okay, now let's play around with the spawn of the blocks. Let's do uh, spawn well, in the levels. Spawn Tetris shape. So now we are supposed to know how many blocks we spawned already. So Tetris state. Let's call that shapes spawned. Okay, then we're gonna add this to this guy. And okay, so whenever we on a shape, I'm going to set the level state dot Tetris uh, dot shape spawned. Okay, and whenever I whenever I try to spawn this guy, let's see if our shapes, let's say, let's say f 10 shapes, I don't know. So if it's less than 10 shapes, let's spawn more shapes. Maybe I should... Mm. Okay, so... Okay, so if we are... Maybe we should test this first. So when we when we finish the game, like no, not really. Yeah. Okay. So when we finish the level, if we only spawned one, we're going to spawn this guy. So. I'm gonna test this guy is less than two, three. Okay, and if it's one, then we spawn another one. Okay, so we are supposed to like if we are one, we spawn another one, then we sp this is actually two. Yeah, I think that'll work. Um, I'm, I'm missing. Okay. Okay. Now we should have three shapes and win. This is going to be full of close calls, I think, this level. Okay. Okay, we spawned two, and one of them was way too much. What shape is that?
that was really weird. If we spawned three shapes, do this. Mm, that was really weird. So let's do like uh, max x. X. Uh, let's do the max X. It's gonna be this guy minus five, I suppose. Yeah. You know what I'm gonna do to be more interesting? Uh, let's do like if we lost and we just spawned one block, I'm gonna spawn another block. Okay? And then if else if the blocks destroyed plus one is equal to the num block, so if there's one block missing. And if we spawn two blocks, then I'm gonna spawn two more blocks. Okay, but yeah. Then we probably add a timer at this point. Because yeah, to make that a little bit harder. I, I can just see how it's gonna feel with Two blocks at once. I should probably add power downs as well to this night. So I got a new block. Maybe this level should, should have a little bit of, of a progression. Maybe it's gonna start like this, and then the blocks will rotate. That, that could be cool, I think. Yeah, okay. Let's see, so now it's on. Oh man. Oh, lost. Okay, I liked that. Let, let's add a little bit of progression in this sense. Let's. Um, do you have like simulate block for level? Yeah, we do. Hmm. Let me just make sure. Yeah, we first call the simulate level, then we call the simulate block for level. So I want to spawn. Uh, yeah. So I'm gonna add like a uh, max. I know, like a uh, last block. Last. Uh, let's do let's block py last is a let's call that top block py okay and then for every block I'm gonna see like if the block py is greater than the top block py which is in the let's see in the level state dot Tetris. If this the case, I'm gonna set that to the block py, and we should also add like no, no need. Just uh yeah. I should also add like a post simulate level 
I'm gonna need that. Uh, yeah. The simulate level. Uh, in the Tetris, well, we don't have a Tetris, let's add. 03 Tetris. I'm gonna set this guy to a very small number. So we don't know if we got. Yeah, I'm gonna add a post simulate level. And uh, after we do the whole thing. Yeah, let's say after the whole thing, call that post simulate lab. So it's going to be the same thing, but now we'll be able to, you know, express like other ideas, like if. Uh, let's say the level state dot uh, Tetris dot well I don't remember <laughs> top block P I, I almost typed top most block P but it would would have been wrong anyway so if this guy the, if this guy is zero, let's say if it's less than or equal to zero, we can do like add our final waves of blocks. Yeah, I'm gonna add two rotating blocks. Okay, and I think that'll be that'll be enough for this level. I don't know, maybe it's gonna be too short. Let's see. If the level state dot oh man I think today's a bad variable name day because shapes spawn because I don't remember the variable names okay so if we have spawned is it four shapes yes if we have spawned four shapes and the other one just went past the middle of the screen I'm gonna spawn two more shapes so we're on line a36 spawn Tetris shape, yeah, I'm going to spawn two more shapes. Man, maybe all of them should rotate at this point. Well, I'm going to make the two of them rotate. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to spawn two of them, and uh, that would be the end, I suppose. Max X. Hard coded and uh, copy and paste. Okay, I think this is enough for like post simulate level undefined. Oh, I call that post simulate level, I suppose. No. Yeah, and I did. I did realize that something was wrong, but I couldn't remember which one. Okay, okay. Now let's play and let's see the length. Let's see if it's like. Oh man, close. get to one block of this guy, we should spawn two more. So we have one frame, yeah, we had one frame of problems. And whenever we, these guys hit the middle of the screen, oh, I think it's going to be too hard. I 
I don't know. I don't know. I kind of like that. Oh, I pin spawn blocks on top of each other. Mm. Okay, I kind of liked that, to be honest. I kind of liked that. How are we supposed to avoid that? Well... Um, and then we're going to make those guys rotate. A couple, couple ways we could solve that. Not sure which one's the best. We could partition this guy into playable areas. How many we need? Let's see. Oops. Let's suppose this guy is like three in length, which is gonna be like the biggest. I can also write my name just for fun. <laughs> With Tetris blocks. Okay, cool. So I suppose these are yeah, we're supposed to have like five lanes. Okay, five lanes. So, I'm not sure, maybe in the beginning of the game, I'm going to make the order. Yeah. So, like, lane spawn order. Yeah, I think I think that'll be the best call. Let's make ten spawners. Okay, now whenever we start game, Tetris, which we should make a lane spawn spawn order. How are we supposed to make that? Um, there are a few ways to get random numbers to behave the way you expect them to behave. Because if we just set these guys to random, maybe we could just fill this, this array with random numbers and then we make sure that they don't repeat. I'm not sure. I'm not sure the best way to fill these guys with random. Yeah, so just to be clear, the idea is to, is to be something like have five lanes, let's say it's like zero, four. Well, first one should always be three. Zero, one, two, two. Should always be two. So it should be like something like this. We can hard code that as well. I think I'm just going to cheat and hard code that and change the uh, I don't know I don't know man because these are the kind of affinity things that we spend a long time debugging like weird cases that the guys are on top of each other or maybe we can just get a random one. And make sure don't know the best way. Um, let's just set the lane spawn under to a hard coded thing. So Start out with zero, uh, with two. Let's do like one, and then we do four and zero, and then we do uh, actually let's do three and zero, and then we do two, no, 
two and four. And then let's do one, three, zero. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't like that. Oh, I can't initialize the array like this? Well, that's some syntax. Uh, I'm not sure the best way. Well, you know what? I'm not going to, <laughs> I'm not going to think too much about that. Let's just do the, the thing by hand. Like three zero two four one three and zero. Okay. Not sure this is You know what? I, I don't I don't like that. Let's do a array of like last uh, lanes spawned. Okay, and we're gonna do and we're gonna do the last four lanes. And we're gonna do like a okay, next. Yeah. So the thing is, whenever I spawn a Tetris shape, see the max, max thing. I'm not going to get this guy, but I'm going to calculate it. No, actually, this is you know, strong, but let's do one step at a time. Okay. Too few arguments. Oh. Uh, yeah, this is what I want. Okay. Whenever we spawn the Tetris shape, like this, same thing. Okay. Now, Calculate the XP so like random lane gonna be a random int in range let's do one to four so five lanes well let's do like minus two to two so that's gonna be easier for us to do the, uh, the math and for now let's just spawn the XP it's gonna be the whole size, which is this guy, plus the arena half size. Yeah, so this times this guy times two times this guy. Okay, so this is like the full range. And if I divide that by 5, I get the lane size. And then I just make sure that this is like the random lane times this. Okay, let's see if we spawn in correct positions.
Okay, so we got a random lane. I think this is gonna work. I like that sound effect. Yeah, it was like really strong. Can't shot. Nice. Oh yeah, we have to also fix that. So it is the lane is working, so we have to make sure that uh, they don't spawn at the same lane. So I'm just going to make sure that the last lane is different from the current lane. I think that's the only thing I'm gonna do. And it's gonna be way easier. So last lane, yeah. Okay, and uh, let's call that level state tetris dot last lane equals ram lane. Okay, but we are, we should also fix that problem. And the problem is we are spawning. There's like one frame of them showing up right in the middle. Let's see. Oh, because we probably spawned them after we simulate them. So. Yeah, when we hit uh, let's see what is it called again? Like win test win condition level score change. So, we spawn the Tetris shape, and we said, oh, we should, uh, we should also set the, uh, the P. Yeah. Okay, that'll fix it. Now, I'm going to set that to random lane, but let's like, if random lane is equal to the random lane, to the last random lane. I mean, while is equal and like a max iteration. Then we, we do this guy again. And then we do like max iteration minus minus. We're gonna do like ten iterations. And uh, if max iteration is zero, then we just set that to like this guy plus one. This is really bad luck. GitHub. Uh, you can download the game at HIO as well as the source code. Uh, so I'm going to drop that link in the description. You can download the, the yeah, it's danzadan.h.io. You can come here to download now. You are welcome to give me a tip, but you can just click no thanks, just take me to download, and then you can download every episode, source code, and the executable. And you can go to my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash danzadan, and you can watch all the live streams from the very first line of code that we wrote, everything is recorded, the whole process up to this point. And we did everything from scratch and ourselves. That's pretty cool, I think. So, yeah, you can check these sources out. And uh, if we have a max iteration, the random lane plus plus, but if the random lane is greater to or equal my random lane is going to be zero, so I'm going to wrap. I'm going to wrap. Yeah, C can be a beast. Yeah, I really like C, man. I mean, we did an optimization stream. It was like, yeah, episode 16. And we got the game. It was running at 66 milliseconds per frame 
on a 4K display of our software render, and we managed to get that down to 12 milliseconds per frame. So if you go full screen on the game, I don't know if you guys can see, oh, we are sleeping, right? So we are sleeping at a locked 60 frames per second at a 4K display in our software render. And we didn't do that much of an optimization job. We just did the, the very simple thing of understanding the code and not doing anything too stupid. And the other idea is we could have done simply, we could have done motor threading. We do do motor threading for the audio. We could have done to, to the rendering as well, but we don't even need it, man. And uh, and that was, that was really, really cool, I think. Okay, now I suppose this should be right. So I'm gonna do like uh, random lane. And if it's minus one, if random lane equals minus one, I'm gonna do this whole thing. Otherwise, just go. So, yeah. So random lane is going to be minus one, minus one, minus one. It's going to be two, minus one, minus one. Let's see if we should probably step. Okay, so this is wrong <laughs> right off the bat. So we are going to step the code. Because we got the first part running uh, in our first try, I suppose we should get uh, like the whole thing running. But, I don't know, that's just F. So, random number is 2, so we should not do this, and we should set the last lane. Oh, you know what, let's do an unoptimized build. So, then we set the last lane to 2. And I suppose this is wrong. Okay, so yeah, this is wrong. This is supposed to be the very uh, left position. Minus this guy. So this is going to be... They're going to have size. Minus five. So we're gonna start out actually this guy plus five. I'm gonna start out here, then I'm going to add yes, the number of lanes that we need. So random lane two. That looks correct. Well, but where are the guys? Yes, yeah, should be plus. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so it's not centered. Come on. Awesome. Now we're going to spawn at lane minus one, so let's get a random number, zero. And, uh, yeah. Just set the, the last lane now to zero. That looks perfect, except for this guy. So the random lane is the amount of size we have, which is like from minus arena size, half size times two, minus 10, divided by five lanes. Correct, correct. Um, times the number of random lanes that we have. This looks correct, I think. That should give us the amount per lane, and this should be like our offset, and we're going to start out at the minus half size plus five position. Let me step through this code, and let's see. We are minus 16. I was expecting it to be zero. So let's see why we are not zero. It's 
This guy's 32, so 32 per lane. And we're supposed to be in lane two. So zero. Yeah, this is not entirely correct, I think. Because if you have like five lanes, The lane size is 32, I think. This is correct. But we should really add half of a lane size. So, yeah. So I'm going to call this guy like lane size. And then I'm going to do this guy, which is the leftmost order, plus half. Of the lane size, so lane size five plus this other thing. I think now it should be good to go. Yes. Yeah, that's pretty safe. And uh, let's try adding rotation. Oh, let me go back to the optimized mode. And let's try adding rotation for the blocks, for the last two blocks. Dude, that was some huge particles. Got a bad position, I suppose. Let me stop and let's go. Let's see our uh, level state. Well, I have to go to somewhere valid. Uh, let's go to the win 32. Let's try stopping. The level state Tetris, the last lane was minus two. So in the very first lane, okay, so our problem is our lanes go from zero to minus two, but we are operating as if they go from zero to four, well, minus two from two, but we are operating on them as if they were going from zero to four. So if the random lane is greater to yeah, this is this is nice, I suppose. I may actually limit particle size just because I think it's a bit too big for these guys. Although it's pretty cool. So now we got two guys. <laughs> kind of liked the way they uh, turned out. Awesome. Really awesome. So, yeah. These guys. Oh, there's also a problem on the last spawn. These guys should be the rotate ones. Dude, that was a really, really weird collision bug. By rotated, I mean rotating. Okay, so I uh, think this is going to be good. A couple problems. What if uh, the player destroys the two blocks from the third wave? Not the last wave, the third wave. What if he destroys them both before he gets to here? So if he destroys all of them, which is like score changed. 
if he if he destroys all of them, and there's only one spawn, okay. But if there is actually four spawned, it means that he destroyed that before they got to the center. In this case, I should just spawn two types of shapes. And that should be the only thing I need. Everything else should be taken care of automatically. I think I'm gonna add power downs just to make that a little more interesting. Oh, that was not 100% intended. Okay, now we got to a pretty cool level, a uh, pretty cool point in this level. Oh, ah, almost. Okay, you know what? Let's let's rest this level for a while, so we can play that a bit. Just make sure it's good, and then we. Uh... Dude, that was that was awesome. That was an awesome move. We could probably also uh, make the make them move slowly. Lower. I think I'm gonna do that. Uh, let's do like simulate uh, block for level, and let's just add instead of like a fixed multiplier. Let's make like yes, that's for a coder, the editor. Uh, I really like it. I think it's a uh, really really cool. And you can download that for free on HIO if you want to. I haven't gone much in the customization thing, but uh, but you can go crazy. And just the auto indent, I think that that alone makes it really really cool. And they also call that like virtual white spacing because there's no see if I press the left key, the left arrow key, it goes up because there's actually nothing here. So I can't even mess around with this. This means nothing. It's just like a visual thing. So I, I don't have to worry about indenting like at all. And who likes spend who likes to spend time indenting things? So yeah. So let's just make that thing. I think it's gonna be. I think that's gonna be a little bit, a little bit better. So in the block, let's say. Let's say if we add, this is zero, and this is like, when we spawn the Tetris shape, we go to like 65. So I'm going to hard code this, uh, this guy, I'm going to call that speed. So the speed will be 65. Or half of that, so 32.5 plus the block relative P. Okay, so if we are in the center, we should really go, we should really be here. If we are, if we are up there, but uh, 
Actually, this is wrong. This is actually the full 30, uh, 65, okay? Now, this should be like uh, really big here and really small here. I think that's what we want. So I'm going to multiply that and let's also add a little bit of a multiplier, like point, point zero 0.01, well, maybe. And then multiply that by the speed. I think we'll have a cool result uh, in legal first struct. Let's see. The idea is that it go, is going to go pretty fast in the beginning, but slowly in the end. So see, this is pretty fast. We're like, oh my god. Are we supposed to beat these guys? But it's already slowing down, as you can see. So it's way more manageable. I really liked this solution. Now, yeah. Dude, that was a great call. That made the, the gameplay so much better, I think. What was that? Well, their position is different. We're going at different speeds. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We can't really do that. We should really tag the block as like belongs to this guy. I was wanting to avoid this. But I suppose there's no there's no way around that. Mm. So I suppose we need to know. Yeah. Oh well. So I'm gonna add like a level specific. Specific. Uh block level info and let's do a block level info and do like a union of this guy's gonna be just uh like shape ID. And now that we have this, we probably simplify a lot of our decisions. Yeah, but we are going to need this anyway. So so instead of the shape ID, I probably need the position. So, yeah. Okay, so whenever we do this, I'm going to add, well, I like, I think I, I liked these values. And I'm going to add to the uh, level state dot Tetris dot block our uh, dot I'm gonna call that enemies p. And then it's gonna be block level. What's that? Level specific. Maybe you should call it that. Yeah. Specific. Dot shape ID. Okay. You're not going to set a relative p, just the p. And then when we simulate the level, the Tetris I'm gonna go through all. Yeah, so I'm gonna go like from the first one all the way to like level state dot tetris dot spawned. Oh, I don't remember what this one is called. 
shapes spawned. Should really be spawn shapes, I think. Shapes spawned. I plus plus. So for every shape we spawned, I'm gonna set the level state dot tetris again dot enemies p dot y plus equals to this guy. And this is going to be this guy. But it actually starts at zero, so it's going to be zero. Zero to sixty-five, I suppose. So I'm going to make like sixty-five minus this guy. So now it goes. Minus 65 all the way to 0, which is correct, I think. Okay, now let's add a v2 enemies p, and let's add like 8. And whenever we spawn, uh, Tetris shape. Let's see, whenever we add the shape spawn, I'm going to assert that the shape spawn is less than or equal to the array count of the level, uh, level state. Tetris dot enemies p. Okay. Okay. Um, enemies P I. Okay. Okay, let's see. We typed a lot of code. So yeah, not exactly what we wanted. So um, oh, we didn't multiply that by the dt. Okay, that was that was like the theme of the last stream. <laughs> it's kind of funny that we saw back with this thing. Pretty cool. Uh, oh man. Well, it's not going any slower, I think. Hmm. Relative P, then I'm going to add the enemies P. Well, this should make the blocks just like not move at all, and they don't. So it's probably the way we are setting it. Oh, we're not setting the... We're not setting the... That's one problem, we're not setting the... Sh so... Yeah, we're not setting the shape ID. We forgot to do that. So let's just make sure that this first shape moves the way we want that to move. So let's see. So yeah, it's quick, but not too quick. It's not really slowed down. So our math is probably wrong, but we're not setting the shape ID anyways. So it just should be zero. So let's see the enemies p. So the enemies p dot y. We increment that. Oh, this this is wrong.
Oh, this is not wrong. I mean, theoretically, this is wrong, but, uh... Let's step through this code. So, levels at line 952. Let's put a breakpoint there, and let's see. So, ry is 0. So, 65 minus 0 should be 65. 65. Then we just subtract that a very small number. So we should just add a little bit of movement. Now, next frame, our y is a little bit it's negative. Hmm. Okay, so if you if we are negative, we're getting a greater number, not a smaller number. So I suppose I suppose this is wrong. If we start out at zero and we end at minus sixty-five. No, yeah, this is ex exactly what we what we were thinking about. I'm not sure. What happened there? So, this guy and this guy, it's getting larger. Sixty-five minus sixty-eight is like three. Oh, it's minus three. So, sixty-five minus minus three. So it should be just like sixty-five plus. Sixty-five, sixty. Uh, we're like minus one. Sixty-five plus minus one is sixty-four. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know this is correct because this is hard coded. The check that was pretty stupid. Let's just see the result. Okay, we're pretty slow. Let's see if we're gonna get faster or slower. Yeah, I think. In this track, we're just we're just very slow. We pretty much stop halfway through. So instead of making 65 plus this guy, we're gonna make twice as much. So I think that was the value that we should uh, have. Yeah. So it's pretty fast. And all the G. What we're gonna do. Maybe these guys should use sub pixel accurate. Yeah, see how. Yeah, these guys should be self expected. It's getting smaller. Let's just see if it actually will stop or if I'm gonna die. Well, I'm not to see that. What was. Oh, because we were incrementing that? Oh, no, this is the shape ID thing. Okay. Um, okay. So let's just fix the shape ID. Never we spawn Tetris block, Tetris shape. Now we're gonna set the block. We can also, yeah, we can also play around with this now. We're gonna set the block level specific dot all of that shape ID to the number of shapes spawned minus one. Okay, and this guy is going to be one plus the shapes spawned. Well, 
can just use this guy. Times like 0 0.1. Okay. Now let's play and see how does that look. Okay, I really liked it, really liked it. Really liked it. Let's see. So I'm gonna add for the second block, I'm gonna add power downs. For the third blocks. Also going to add power downs. And these guys will be rotated. Awesome. Awesome. So yeah. Ha. 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 Isn't that cool? I think that's pretty cool. I think I can add more levels now. Yeah, I liked, I really liked it. Uh, this guy can be a little more. Well. And then, let's see, so for the second guys and third guys, I'm gonna add power downs. So, uh, let's see, Tetris shape. This is pretty weird code. This thing. Yeah, this is just nuts. Um, but at this point, I'm going to, yeah, like, if the shapes spawned this one, or let's say two, oh, it's, it's less, if it's greater than or equal to one, Actually, two and greater uh, less than are equal to let's say two, three, and four. So four. I'm gonna set the block power block to a range, integer in range. Um, it's gonna be all the way from last. Or is it power up last plus one to the power count minus one. Oh, actually, this is like in every one. Well, I think we're gonna make the power blocks really big just for fun of it. So I failed. Uh. Okay, these guys should, should give power downs. They do. Pretty hard. I don't think these guys will give just just the second one. So just this guy. Give power downs, and let's see if I can increase the size of the power down. So 
power block. Yes, we do have the half size here. Hmm. How am I going to specify that? Nah, I'm not going to worry about that. That was that's, that's hard enough. So the R is really weird. Looks like an A. Not sure I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, why did I did it have to make me hit it? Okay, this is gonna be really really cool, I think. Oh man. Guys. Yeah, so it's definitely a different level from every other one. Oh! Okay, now it's getting harder. And I think the last one would just have like two shapes that rotate. And then maybe I'm gonna have one more that is like three shapes that rotate and have power downs. So that's gonna be like a full on cycle there. If I manage to get that far. Yeah, because now I'm kind of scared. Yeah. So, this guy is pretty cool. This point. So, these guys should be rotating like crazy. Okay. Hmm. I think I like it. Let's make the rotation part. How about that? Um, maybe today's gonna be just Tetris Day. And then uh, next time we can do like collision and the field stuff. And you know what? That may be enough for the game. Then we do the polish pants. I think there'll be a, a nice call because then it'll be around 2025, 20, I think, because I'm gonna do a couple of polishes. Maybe these guys are gonna take two streams, maybe. And uh, for the gameplay exploration, yeah, because gameplay takes a long time. And I think you guys got the idea. Maybe we're gonna do a couple levels off stream. I don't know. So let's add rotating blocks. So a couple things for the Tetris game. Rotating blocks. And uh, rotating blocks with like two rotating blocks and like three rotating blocks. Power downs. So I am going to take like a one minute break. Just so I can get more water because my voice is running out. Would you be interested in making games in Rust? Um, not really. I mean, I'm using C because I don't like crazy stuff. And the compiler not letting me compile code because it doesn't think it's correct. I, I classify that as crazy. <laughs> I mean, I, I really understand the use case in bigger projects, but this is just a project for fun. And I, I'm just doing games for fun. I'm not doing games like big games, commercial games anymore. So this is just for fun. And I don't really want to be fighting with the compiler. I want the compiler to be my friend. That's one of the reasons I don't use C++ is because it's like really crazy. So yeah, not really interested. But who knows? I'm not going to say I'm never going to use Rust, but not right now, I think. And I don't really have with the games this scale, which is pretty small, I don't have the problems that Rust helps with like aesthetic type checking, aesthetic memory checking and stuff, pointer stuff. We'd also have to create stuff with pointers. We did the, uh, today even, 
and I'm, I'm not sure how Rust would like this. I mean, we we added to the block. We did that to the audio as well. A pointer to a V2 here, which is the parent P. This is like probably not very recommended if you're doing like bigger projects with more people on the team because this is very unsafe, so to speak. But for this game, that we're, we're almost done. I mean, who cares? So yeah, not really interested at this point, but uh, who knows, later on, not sure. One minute break to get some water, to get my voice back a little bit, and then we're gonna go back and finish the Tetris level, which we're gonna add, that's these two things, the rotating blocks and the rotating blocks for downs. I think that can be a good level if you manage to get this far. It's gonna be a hard one though, <laughs> okay? We'll be back in a minute. Okay, so let's do the final thing we need to finish this level, which is the rotated blocks. And the rotating, I don't mean like full rotation like we did with the particle system. I mean like this is the block, and then it will become this block. Uh, let me draw that. And then it will become this block. And then it'll become this block. Let's see. Okay, so this is what we need to do. We want the block to animate like this. Now, I think I'm going to add a couple of things. Like, I think each block. Hmm, not sure how I want to do this. Because let's let me show you guys how we're doing this at this point. Just like spawn Tetris shape. Okay, so we have specified these guys. And what I what I probably want to do, maybe maybe I can hard code this. Hmm. Because like this guy, let's say this guy is zero. Let's talk about this guy. This guy is zero, zero. And then let's say well, can we make that a general thing? I think we can make that a general thing. Hmm. So if we assume a three by three matrix, so to speak, for the blocks, and then we just swap the X and Y. Yeah, I think I kind of like this solution. So let's say we have Four matrices, four matrices, matrices. Have four matrices, <laughs> like, 
and then we just specified specify the first block position and we save that and whenever we rotate we just change the uh, x to y and here we're going to invert the x and, uh, and here we're going to invert the x and the y okay I really really liked it really liked this solution really liked it. So I'm going to do something like this and uh, for the P yeah I think that's, that's the only thing I need I think that's the only thing I need Now, I'm probably going to make this a global timer, so I'm going to add like a uh, rotate timer, and whenever I simulate the game, oh, let's just make sure we didn't break anything. We should not be 100% centered now, and we can probably change that. Yeah, let's change that. So the base P, so being this guy. I'm also going to offset that by this much. So I'm going to make that a. I'm not sure why I'm doing that with my head. Yeah, I'm just offsetting that in the. Uh, so yeah. Um, scrap though. Minus. Yeah, this should be like this. Okay. Okay, let's see. Okay, perfect. Now, we're going to play around with the P in some circumstances. Okay, so whenever we finish the rotate, I'm going to get all the blocks that are, fr that are marked from like this guy up and rotate them. I really, really liked the solution. I think I even... I don't know, I really liked it. Really liked it. Okay. Um, no, this is not wrong. This is. This is. Uh, text. Okay. Now, whenever we simulate the level, simulate level. We are going to and uh, is that is that the same thing I mean right here we change we make the minus the y would be minus y and be x minus y oh this is like this is x y this is x minus y this is minus x minus y and this is uh, yeah and this is minus x y so I'm probably gonna gonna save the uh, rotate level rotate i okay now whenever we simulate the level I'm just going to let's see if I have shape I'm just going to increment let's call it this Tetris Okay, 
Uh, then we're going to do like Tetris rotate T plus equals DT and if the if this guy is greater to two, two seconds we're going to zero that and then we're going to go through all the blocks yeah so let me do a point to a block. And we'll move through all the blocks, and if they're alive, and if the block level specific oops, dot uh, Uh, shape ID. So if our shape ID is greater to, let's say, we'll go one, two, three, four, so it's greater to equal to five. In this case, I'm going to see how I'm going to add, and this I'm going to set the Tetris rotate I. Plus plus, then we're gonna do like if this guy is greater than four, it's back to zero. Now I'm just going to if it's zero, if it's zero, I'm gonna set the P. So block P is going to be the block PX and this will be the block PY negative. Okay, I think I'm just going to do this. Okay, and else if we are one. We're gonna go this transformation, but we already inverted. So I'm just going to invert the x. And in this case, I'm going to re-invert the y. So it's the same thing here. Just align that. So in this case, I'm going to realign the Y. And uh, in this case, I'm going to realign the X. Okay, that looks good. That looks good, I think. Just for testing, I'm not going to do this if maybe like for everyone. Oh, and this is wrong. Uh, Okay. Okay, let's see. let's see if you got a rotating block. Well, that was like the best run I ever did. And that was the second best run I ever did. They're not rotating. Put a breakpoint line uh, 955 five, the levels. Okay. Well, we are optimized, but well, let's not be optimized. Okay, rotate I is zero, so so we should 
we should invert the p. Oh, we're not considering the p. Oh, this is wrong. This is wrong. So I forgot about how to work. This should be the relative p. Because the p is calculated every frame based on the parent p, the parent's p. Okay. Now let's let's see some rotation going on. So what happened was RP went all the way down here. Oh, okay. Mm. Okay, so you know what? Our we want that P to be local, like this guy has to be zero. And that's not the case, we're setting like the whole thing. So yeah, let's go back to where we spawn Tetris shapes. And this guy. So this guy Y should be uh let's see P this guy. So this guy is just going to be this guy and zero. But that's the P. But the level state dot Tetris dot enemies P in the shapes spawned position and I'm gonna move this guy afterwards. I think I'm gonna do this like the last thing. And I'm gonna do like shapes spawned. I'm gonna change that to like normal one. This would be shape spawned. Okay, I'm gonna set the enemy species shape spawned to this guy. Oh. You know what? Let's make that. Let's make like level Tetris. It's for the Tetris. Okay, and uh, let's see. Whenever we see a level state Tetris dot like Tetris error. Okay, syntax error. B2. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, it was offset, but uh... okay, our rotations are wrong, probably. This guy is X and Y. Oh yeah, this is like wrong. The X becomes the Y. Yeah, so let me. Yeah, I was thinking about that when I dropped, but when I did this guy, it was all wrong. So this is X and Y. And let's see, if this is like, this is like, I don't know, 2, 1. Oh, let's make that 1, 2. Oh, well, sorry, it's... This is supposed to be like zero one. Yeah. But now it's to be supposed to be minus one. Zero. So yeah. And that and this guy we should think this is correct. And this is probably like this. Okay. Let's see. Um, at, uh, this, but uh, this is gonna work, I think. So first guy is going to be 
minus y, so minus y, and this guy's going to be positive x. And then we go back, so I'm going to uh, change again, but all of them are going to be negative, so this guy is already negative. This guy is going to be negative, I think. I'm not entirely sure. And then I'm going to swap them one more time. And, uh, yeah, first, second. And then the y, and then the x should be negative on the y position. So I suppose, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is wrong. We have to do that more carefully, but who knows. In the last one, I'm going to swap them again. And uh, the, the x is going to be yeah, like this. Well, let's see what's going to happen. I'm not sure. I don't know what will happen. Uh, okay. <laughs> Okay, now that'll be fun to see. Okay, first of all, our offset should also include the Y, so in the spawn in the spawn tattoos shape. This should be both let's see. This guy, call that offset. Okay. And I think we got something wrong. Yeah, um... Which should really be offset like minus y. Let's stop the rotation for now. Let's just make sure we got that offset working. We should be centered, and we are not. The y is problematic. The y is inverted. And the X is probably inverted as well, let's see. Okay, now the X was correct, I suppose. Which was what I did the first time. You know what? We start off, we should add like one full guy left. Let me put a breakpoint here at a 393. Let's see. Oh, not, not like this. Not like this. Let's see. Okay, we should also, uh, come on. Let's see. Well. Okay, so our offset is minus 8. Our half size is 4. Let's see. We expect... I suppose it's correct. Minus 8.5. So at this point, let's see, at this point, our x should be 0. And it is 0.
So I suppose the lane is wrong? Let's see what we set the lane, like the enemies. The This guy should be zero something. Yeah, it is off. Oh, we should also, we should not remove the initial offset to that guy, so. Yeah, so this offset has to be used here as well. So, oh, it is used. So I suppose it's not supposed to be, yeah, it's not supposed to be used. Block half size undeclared. Spacing undeclared. Let's see. Okay. Nice. I think this is 100%. The block should spawn a little bit. A little bit up now. Let's see. And we were using that some other place. Let me just see. Ah, this is this is pretty, pretty nice. Oh, it was used on the speed. So let's see. Let's be first time. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to change that. Because it is slowing down. But not not uh I'm gonna make that a constant, like 65. I'll just change that to 70. 70. I'm gonna make this like Tetris shape initial Y. Okay, and whenever we set the speed so it's in the simulate. No, uh, uh, let's see. It's in the block four. Mm, now it's just a simulate thing. Simulate level. Yeah. At this point, let's see, we set this guy to 130, which is like supposed to be twice as much. Okay, and I should probably initialize that something. Here. Let's do seven. Let's see. Dude, what is wrong with our collision? We're gonna look into that next time, anyways, but I didn't know it was this busted. It's a little bit too fast, I think. We're going to decrease that by... So it starts starts off... Oh yeah, because this guy has to be smaller now. Okay, let's now turn the rotation back on. Let's see how that looks. So our Y. Our Y is busted. I think. We are supposed to start... Oh, okay, the Y is different. Is it not? No, it's the same thing. Oh, because we are decreasing the Y, so yeah, the Y is supposed to be there. 
Is that correct? Yeah, because this is the other way around. Okay, let's see. I think the math is right, but of course it isn't. But let's see what the problem is. This P should be minus the offset, whatever. Let's see. Minus 8.5. Okay. And this guy should now be uh, 0 minus 8.5. Oh, minus 16. Okay, because the offset. Okay. The offset should not be, should not be signed. Uh, let's see, yeah, this should be the offset. We do minus the offset, plus the offset. Yeah. Okay, okay. Let's see. Okay, I suppose we are correct. We are correct. Oh, wow, that was that was really cool. But 70 was too much. It's easier to see on the other guy. For some reason I can't get it. Well, let's, let's hard code that. Now let's change the 70 back to 65. And then, uh, Let's make sure whenever we spawn the Tetris shape, whenever we see the random, yeah, let's make like this. So we always, let's get the first guy. Six five is still too much. Okay, so. I think our Y is wrong. I'm gonna run through this guy one more time. <laughs> this guy. Because we should actually make like relative to the previous one. So this this transformation right here should be like this is let's say this is zero one. Correct, zero, one. And we want this guy to be minus one, zero. So the first one, first one is supposed to be correct. Let's see. Rotate T. First one, we invert, the, we place the Y on the X and invert that. So this is one, should be minus one. And this is zero. So. Minus one and zero. Okay, now this is like this transformation here. This transformation here, we are supposed to to be. Let's see. Now this guy is minus one zero. Oh, so yeah. We're supposed to be minus y x, which is what we are doing. Minus y x. Now this guy, it's, if it's uh, minus one, zero, we want it to be zero minus one. So it's going to be um, the y, yeah, I'm going to change the y here. Remember, this is now the y, so I'm gonna place the y here and the minus one, I'm just going to place the x here, so no need to change the sign. Because we've got this shape now, which should be 0 minus 1. Yes. Now for the last piece, I want to end up being 1, 0. 
So I'm going to place the minus y here in x again. Yeah, so I think I'm going to run through other uh, the other shapes as well. But uh, so just like we change the sign, we do nothing, we change the sign again. This guy. And then we, uh, well, for the last one, this one is 1, 0. We just do not. We just swap them like this, okay? Now, let's see for another shape. Let's see, this guy is 1, 1. No. Uh, yeah, this guy is 1, 1. This guy is 1, minus 1. Yeah. So this is 0, minus 1. So we don't do anything. This transformation. One one. Yeah. Then yeah. No, oh, this is this is zero one. One. This is correct. Zero one. And this one is 1 minus 1. Correct that. 1 minus 1. Yeah. And at this point, let's see. Should be 1, 1. And that's what we're going to do. Correct. 1, 1. This point should be, should be minus 1, 1. So, yeah, I think, I think this is correct. Let's try that one more time. Let's see. Okay, I, I just think we are swapped. See if I can if I decrease this guy. Should be easy. To show. And what is the, the normal shape? Uh, my God, let's see. Normal shape is yeah the first one. On to the right. Okay. Now let's see. This is the first shape. Looks good. Now this one, the X, the Y is inverted. So the Y is inverted. Yeah, we should probably do like one at a time, really. So, um, and the X should not have been inverted. Oh, like this. But just to be 100% safe, I'm going to make this guy even longer, like maybe 5 seconds. So this is how it looks, correct? Let's see. Perfect. Now let's go again. Yeah, I think, think, think we'll do. I think that's uh, more correct at least. Let's see. Oh, let, me, oops. let me go back. Change that to two again. Perfect. And back now. I think this is 100 percent So we're only gonna do this. These guys. Let's go. Oh and 70 is oh 65. 
still too much. And now we can probably go back in the uh, speed t. Um, uh, is that called? Yes, simulate game level. Yeah, this guy. Let's increase this guy a little bit. Let's see, let's see. We have some crazy artifacts. Probably has to do with the rendering order. When we destroy the block, well, Whenever we lose also, let's try the lose one first, because that'll be easier. Let me just reset the game. Okay. That's weird. That's weird. That's okay. So we still haven't drawn anything yet. And then we so the score and set start game. And on start game, we set the level. Oh, this is just the clan. And then we set the player life, set the current level, zero the level state. Reset balls. We should, we should probably reset the blocks as well. Zero. Oh, we zero the blocks. Hmm. Okay. And we zero the particles. And we spawn a shape. I think this will have to be done in the end of the level, though. Because this shapes. Uh, well, I do set the enemy T. To 0, 060, which is correct. And then, uh, okay. I set shape spawn to 1. Okay. 
Now, block PY. is greater than the drop. Ah, what's going on here? The block PY is greater than the top. Uh, I'm not sure, it's not going to change anything, but this is wrong, we should, we should return at this point. But, uh, Block top block. Okay, yeah. Oh, because we are in the middle of a loop here. Yeah. Yeah, this is really wrong. I should probably have a flag. Yeah, we do have advanced level. Is it set? No, it's not set. I think I'm just going to set that. No, advanced level. Not sure, not sure how I'm gonna structure this. The the crazy hack. Yo man, how are you doing? Let me show you what I've been doing today. It's been pretty cool, I think. We have a new level, which is Tetris. Yeah, there is a problem. See, but that problem's not supposed to happen. I don't know. Doing well in you. I'm doing really well. So I'm a little bit tired, if truth be told. <laughs> uh, but I do want to finish this thing. But. This is gonna be a little bit hard. Our collision is really problematic. This is gonna be a little bit hard. I think. Because it has to do. Oh man, so close. I would thank you for the tips. I finished the intro to see from him and here with the guy teaches me interesting. Awesome, man. Yes. It's really cool, and he's a, such a great programmer. It's really cool, man. You should really start the main series now. It's awesome. Don't be discouraged by the, the size, because the results are pretty cool. I, I have a couple of things I want to change here. I want to make the... I want to make the, let's say, what is that? Simulate level. I want to make the speed. Uh, let's see... Is that the similar level? Yeah, I want to make this speed. What are they going to say about? Yeah. Yeah, man, it's really cool. I mean, if you follow the series up to like... I followed... When I first started, I followed up to like... 40. But I was casually following it. Then... I decided to learn for real, so I started all over again and did like, I watched one episode and tried to program my own version of Handmade Hero, right? I did that up to 200 and something. Yeah, 200 and something. Then I, uh, I quit in the good sense. Maybe I have to work that on me, but I was doing some quick sneak peeks through some videos and it looks so frustrating to have slow results. It depends, man. I mean, yeah, uh, in the later part of the series, that's true, but in the beginning, that's not true at all. I mean, in a couple of episodes, in a couple of episodes, we're gonna have some crazy, crazy results. Yeah, I mean, there are a couple of slower series, like the debug part is a little bit slow, um, that I can remember. But if you watch that twice, I usually, I usually watch it a little bit faster. And if there's like a critical point, I just go back and watch that slowly. So so I didn't I didn't uh, I didn't spend too much time. I mean it was a long time but it wasn't that long. He was still showing a great pixel tile map with uh, in the 30th video. 
Yeah, man, but uh, what it teaches, that's, that's the thing. That's why I did this series. This series is to be the quicker result version of Handmade Hero. So we had gameplay uh, on day two, right? But the truth is, he's, he's teaching how to do a robust engine. And we're not doing that in this series. So we're going to learn how to actually do audio for reals and the whole thing. It's going to be theory behind it. And, uh, and we're going to learn the theory behind everything up to that point. Like, and uh, bitmaps, and he does some Tao Chunk things that was pretty cool. That was a little bit hard for me to understand at that time. But yeah, so it's a di so you gotta 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 approach that with a, the mindset of really exploring a simple space, right? And uh, yeah, and then the other hand, I have my intro that I just started. I don't I don't think I showed you that. I don't think I showed you. I started my how to program in C++ tutorial series, and this is actually a tutorial series. So uh, I go step by step. I have some like cool drawings I did, and I go like step by step, and hopefully we're gonna have a cool game, and it's gonna be even even faster. It's gonna be like seven to ten minutes video minute video. Then I'm going to edit that together just to show the main thing. I've never watched it. Yeah, yeah. This I only have one video so far because they. Do take a long time to make, but I really, really liked the result. And people also did, I mean, 200 views already. It's been like two days. And 200 views is a lot for my videos. So, yeah, I think, uh, let me show you the link. Oh, it's my, it's my, my YouTube channel, right? Just, uh, yeah. Okay, so hopefully I can just finish The, uh, yeah, it was the collision thing, right? It's weird, like the first frame. Yeah, I have to, I have to delay that. So, uh, What are I doing the space invaders? Like in the loose life true. I just I just uh, I don't know. I think this is also wrong for the space invaders. Do you think that following let me see? Do you think that following the main series will be great to improve general knowledge in C, or maybe there's another mess getting less time. Because I am planning to apply for a job in the future that will require C++, C++ and I am planning to study a path. Maybe I should be thinking about some AI projects doing C, not sure. Yeah, the thing is, if you're looking for a job in that sense, you should really see what kind of pro projects the company makes, and you should do that. So probably not Handmade Hero. Not sure, probably that's not the best path. Yeah. So I would I suppose it's AI, since you mentioned AI. I think you should do a little bit of the Hemi Hero series. Just because he does teach us a lot of programming in general. So but uh just enough so you are really comfortable in C. I mean by real really comfortable, I mean comfortable confident enough to be able to create your own projects, both searching for already existing solutions and tutorials but already creating your, your own stuff so i suppose yeah if you're already on that level that you can express your own programs i really think you should just go ahead and focus on whatever that job requires if it's ai just focus a lot on ai and uh the practice will make you better really in terms of like programming in general so yeah so even if you focus on a small project Small, in my, by me, I mean a focus project. You can focus on a like a specific project like AI and do that a lot, like every day for like a, a some some time. Your general programming lot knowledge in C will improve a lot. So you have you can be you can be easy on that sense. Cool. I actually, wanted 
I actually watched the first three videos and I had a feeling the main knowledge I was going to get was just about the Windows libs and how to make things right the variable. Let me see if I can... Uh, maybe you can watch the... Let me just... Uh, well, I'm not going to play around with my mouse. But uh, check out the Engine Architecture video. And I think the one after that, I believe I'm going to watch your series. Yeah, my series is going to be pretty cool because it's going to be pretty focused, I think. So you're going to get the best bang for your buck, I think. And uh, yeah, I think that'll be pretty cool. But uh, I think maybe in the meantime, while I don't finish the series, you can watch the, the uh, architecture lecture, the uh, engine architecture lecture. And starting from that, maybe watch three or four videos. That's after the Windows stuff. And then he starts creating like the tile maps and things like that. And you're going to learn. Because the main thing that I think you can take away from that series is a semantic compression, which is like his way of programming. And he also wrote about that on his blog. So you can probably take a look at that as well. So take a look about semantic compression on his blog. After I test this, I can probably link you to that blog, to that blog post. But a semantic compression is the main thing, and and watch that uh, and watch that uh, architecture, uh, engine architecture video tutorial, and probably a couple ones after that as well. So that's going to be a good introduction, I think, to so the main points about general programming. That uh, cool, yeah, no problem. <laughs> I can tell you if that works out for you. This is taking a long time, man. And uh, it's all to see if the result is going to be visually problematic. But to be honest, I don't think it matters because I think we want to change that anyway. But that, uh, I don't know. Let's just keep going for a while. Let's... Picking up speed, finally. Maybe just the pitch changed. Now we think it's picking up more speed. <laughs> like three more passes. Yeah, two more. To accelerate the game. Yeah, we do have we did have a method to accelerate the game. But the game broke like like crazy. So is that what I'm gonna do which I should have thought about that earlier? It just to increase the speed in which they uh, the movement. Yeah. Yeah, let's do like let's just improve this guy's DT. Yeah. <laughs> so but that was I don't know. Do even more. Fifty. But we do have to pay attention though. Oh. 
I think it looked fine. Well, yeah, it looked okay, I think. But uh, we still have to, yeah, lose life. If we are supposed to do an insta kill, instead of doing this, I'm going to set the advance level to true. Actually, I'm going to set the advance level, yeah, to true. Then set the advanced level target. To current level, I'm going to introduce this variable. So advance level. Well, I'm going to have a advance level target. Okay, and at this point, whenever we advance level, we should really do the advance level target. And whenever we advance level here, so in the victory, I'm going to set the advance level target to the current level plus one. Let's see, advance level, start game, set that to false. Yeah. Let's see how that looks. Oh, we should also try adding the subpixel thing to the this guy. Let's see, let's see. It's gonna work. It worked. Okay, and that was pretty easy. But that <laughs> took the longest time just to I don't know what happened. My head is kind of empty now today, I suppose. So I'm gonna play a little bit of that level and I think that'll be enough for today. Oh, let's also just try, uh, well, in the blocks. I don't know. Just think about using the uh, sub pixel accuracy render for the block. Maybe you should do life fits greater than some size. Yeah, let's do that. So. In the let's see, let's see our start game. Right, we have our spawn Tetris shape. It's four. So if it's greater or equal to four, let's do this test. In the the game, when we draw a rect, for yeah, let's do the sub pixel guy. Whenever we draw the rect for the let's see. This is the balls, this is the particles, okay, this is the, this is it. We're going to do like, oh, well, this is kind of weird, but let's do like, if blocks have size of x squared to equal, let's do a, a 3.9. We're gonna do a subpixel drawing, else we're not. And yeah. Sub rack subpixel. Yeah. Let's see if that's gonna look better. That looks way better. And uh, let's see the performance. Well, since we have just a few blocks. Sure. Oh, but are we not optimized? I think, yeah, we're not. Thank God. Because we're running pretty badly. Okay. Yeah, this is awesome. In the Pong game, maybe. You know what? I'm gonna do them. I'm gonna do it for all of them, for all the blocks, the sub pixel right here. So, sub pixel.
Yeah, we don't have that many blocks anyways. So... And I think it's gonna look way better. I mean, in these levels, it's just wasting performance because the blocks don't move. But like, yeah, this level as well. Oh! Since it's sub pixel accuracy, we do see a little bit of the. Uh, I don't think it's a problem. It's a little bit of the wall. Yeah, it's even kind of stylish. So let's accept that as a feature. And let's check out this guy. Yeah, it's way better. Tetris one. This one looks the best because they move pretty slowly. Yeah, look at that. That's perfect. Okay, so we still have the problem. <laughs> so we're not done yet. We still have the problem when we do the uh, win. Let's do the win condition. Level score changed. But that's weird because this test point condition. Oh, yeah, we do that in the middle of the thing. Mm. So I think I'm just going to add this to the post level thing. So, yeah. Maybe I should, I should, I should just add a. Uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna do this. I think that's gonna be a little bit cleaner. In the Tetris level, I'm gonna have like a post level spawn shapes. Okay, so it's gonna be zero by default. And in this case, I'm gonna set like the level state Tetris dot post level spawn shape plus equals to one, so plus plus. And in this case, I'm going to set that to 2. Okay? Same thing here. And I can probably get that a little bit better like this. Okay? Now in the post simulate level, Tetris, let's also do like the 4. Okay, then I'm going to do a spawn Tetris shape passing minus one. Okay, so that should be fixed. And let's put a limit on the particle size. Spawn explosion. Spawn particle explosion. Have a base size. Let's see, block destroyed. Yeah, let's do like a, uh, a min of this guy. Let's see, two. Let's see. Yeah, this is way better. Yeah, this is perfect. And I should also make the ball uh, use the sub pixel. So, date ball. Uh, where do we draw? Draw rect render balls. I think that's gonna be smooth also. Yeah, I don't see that much of a difference. Since we're not v-synced, if we really focus on the ball, we see that we miss a couple of frames. I don't think there's anything we can do about that, to be honest. Unfortunately. Unless we use like OpenGL instead. Which we're not gonna do in this project. The soundtrack is cool. Uh, makes a difference in the experience. Thanks, man! 
<laughs> I'm still learning about making music, so it's awesome to see that you liked it. Oh, look at those space invaders. Okay, I'm gonna take that. I kinda like that. But, uh... Now that we don't... We don't increase this guy at that point... Well, that doesn't make sense, right? Then let me try this thing. Because we finished the game and we shouldn't have finished the game, so... In the level score change, I'm gonna return of whether or not we should uh, cancel, so abort, let's call that. So if it's true, return. Okay, so level score changed. Uh, B32, like, returns if we should abort the the test for condition procedure. In this case, turn true. Yeah, and I'm gonna have to put these guys back in. In this case, return false. Okay. Let's see. Oh! Nice. Okay. The shapes spawned were probably equal to their rate count? Yeah. Who is this guy? I don't recognize him. You know, I <laughs> took a while for me to understand. <laughs> but I, I told I told that to clone style earlier. The way I operate with my hair is that I let it grow as big as I'm comfortable with, and then I cut that as short as I'm comfortable with. So I have the minimum amount of work with my hair. So you're probably gonna see throughout the live streams it getting pretty big again. Then you're gonna See me trim that pretty small again, so pretty short again, I suppose. So <laughs> I was a little bit slow on my part to get the joke, but in my defense, uh, today's been a crazy live stream. I mean, I really enjoyed it. We've created the Tetris game from nothing other way to pretty, pretty, co pretty complete, I think. I mean, once we solve this problem. Uh, yeah, so in the post simulate. Okay, yeah, the problem is, yeah, uh, in the post simulate thing, we should reset that variable. So, yeah, post simulate, and then we set that back to zero. Because uh, otherwise, we are going to keep spawning like crazy. So, let's see. Oh, man. Are you getting that 100% correct? Uh, let's see. Oh, dude, we gotta fix the collision. I'm gonna do that tomorrow. Oh, uh, no, not tomorrow. Probably, probably next stream. Not sure. Probably gonna be Saturday. Yeah, now we're talking. Oh, we're almost talking. Come on. Nice. One more. Oh, okay, I'll take that. Okay, that was perfect. We solved the problem. It goes to destroy all blocks before they drop. In this game mode, it is. Yeah. 
Yeah. So. The last was intense. I think it may be too hard. <laughs> to be honest. I think the speed. Let's, let's change the speed. <laughs> yeah, that's hard. The last red block was intense. Yeah, man. <laughs> that's, that's way too hard. Uh, let's do the simulate level here. Let's play around with the speed. Let's, let's make that way. Oh, sorry, changed the wrong one. This guy. I'm gonna change that to maybe. Uh, I don't have a bot. What are you? What are you trying to know, man? You can just ask. I don't have that many frequently asked questions, anyways. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, nice. Now, this guy has the part downs. I really liked this level in terms of the structure. I also think I'm gonna keep. Uh, but it's really hard. Well, since our collision is problematic, it's even harder than it should be. Let's see. Oh my god. Um, that's wrong, which probably should have gotten two. And the, these should be the rotated ones. They're not rotating. Oh! No, I suppose it is correct. These should be the rotating ones. Let's see. And they're not rotating either. Okay. Um, is this correct though? Let me cheat. And let's do like a lose life. That's not lose life. Well, but we have a few problems, right? Like the rotate is wrong. Mm. If our specific shape is greater than five. Can we rotate? Hmm. I don't know. I know, let's see. Okay, so this is the R down. And yeah, okay, now it's correct. I've got two. Oh man, I don't know what happened. I should probably watch the video. I'm gonna do that. Because probably we destroyed too early or too late. Yeah. yeah. But these guys are not rotating for some reason. Let me let me stop the game and let's go to the rotating with that. Levels 979. See? So yeah, this is certainly not running. Let me break point. Okay, rotate, let's see, oh, we are in the, oh, crap, we are in the optimized build. Okay, so I think this will be the last, I said that a lot today, but I think this will be the last thing we need to solve. Nice. 
nice. Nice, almost nice. This was perfect. Oh, dude! How about that? Oh, come on. Okay, let's let's debug. Set the breakpoint here. Let's do frame. Let's see. I rotate. Let's set that to. Okay, now, ah, uh, what happened? What happened? Oh, we say return. Oh, dude. Uh, levels. Okay. Yeah, this should be continued. Okay, now we can probably go back to losing the life. And I think that will be the end of the Tetris level, at least for now. It's pretty hard, but I think I think it's interesting. There's probably another bug. That bug, uh, that bug that happened when we, uh, oh. awesome, awesome, but this is wrong, so I'm going to Leave it like this for today. Not sure, but maybe one thing that could be make it easier is to place have some line that would show the path that the ball would go when it touches the platform. Mm, you mean like a like a? Oh, right, let me try to understand what you mean. Do you mean something like this? But maybe that goes all the way here? Exactly. <laughs> oh, so I didn't understand. Well, that could be interesting. But that could be visually too, too much, I think. That is one idea that we couldn't... I like this idea a lot. This one, I'm not sure. I mean, maybe we can pull the visuals. But I think it'll be worth trying, maybe. So I am going to write that down because we finished quotes that you do. And I am going to write a note to myself that play Tetris and write notes. Play like our Tetris and write notes and uh, review video before. I don't know, 3.38, because I didn't know the time. And see a bug in the, in the uh, shape spawn. I think it spawned three in the shapes. I don't know. It's gonna be it's gonna be hard to debug. Then not using OpenGL nor SDL. You are correct. This is not using OpenGL nor SDL. In fact, this is our rendering code. Uh, <laughs> I typed OpenGL here, <laughs> and that was nothing. <laughs> our software rendering is the whole thing. So it's like a thousand lines. Oh, we have a couple of a thousand lines. We have levels. Is a thousand lines. So the rendering is a thousand lines. Let's see game. Game 700, almost a thousand. Windows 600. 
Inception. <laughs> so we're doing everything by hand. We have the very simple ones like clear screen that we iterate through all the pixels and clear them. And we have more complicated ones like uh, draw text. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> yeah, I suppose that doesn't count. Hey, Ivan, dude, awesome to see you here, man. Let me show you the game. We, we worked at that a lot today. And, then, and that was, oh, we also have a recursive. We also have draw rect with subpixel accuracy. That was awesome. First time live. Yeah, man, in what time zone? You are in Italy, right? Italy is probably early morning now, is it correct? That's awesome. Because actually, I don't say this like yearly. But today, I got really excited because we managed to implement the whole Tetris level in our breakout game. That was pretty cool. We have like, like the draw bitmap, so if you can download the uh, the the uh, you can download the chat. No, you can download the the game recursive and check out how we did that uh, on each I/O here. In the very first day, we implemented the, the rendering. So you can go to the YouTube channel and watch the first day, which we implemented the first version of the rendering. And then later on, we did like rotated rectangles and we did bitmaps. And, uh, and you can download each of the source codes and play around with that. Just click download now. You're welcome to give me a tip where you can just skip that and just download. Yeah, so you can watch the series and see how we did the render with no SDL and no OpenGL. It's pretty cool. I remember taking a bouncing ball in assembly. I wish I had the source code. Oh, that that's really awesome. Is that x86 x or x, x64 assembly? Uh, yeah, 4, four o'clock. Quite a night animal. <laughs> but have you slept? I mean, you just woke up or you still have, haven't gone to sleep? <laughs> yeah, wow, well, it's the latter, man. Wow, you're really a night animal. <laughs> uh, let me show you what we have now. So we finished this menu and we optimized that to run. No, it's still woke. Wow. <laughs> so I can't feel tired. I'm tired, but it's still like 11 p.m. here. So I'm not, I shouldn't be tired. You should be tired. <laughs> yeah, let's just take that menu. Yeah, it's kind of inspired by Steven Sausage Roll. <laughs> Let me turn your volume up a little bit. Just so we can hear the music a bit better. Yeah, so we have like the... We have like the Breakout Clone. That's the first level. That's not too exciting. Except... I do like our... Yeah. I like the mood. <laughs> Truly old, good 80s. Yeah, I think. I mean, it's a bit modern in terms of like the game feel and the animation and the particle and stuff. But uh, the, idea, the idea was to get the best of both worlds, I suppose. Because I wasn't even around in the 80s, so I don't know the, exactly the feel of the 80s. So. <laughs> All I can do is apply my 21st century twist to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this level, which is the wall level, we have power ups and power downs that we can uh, get. Like this one, more balls. This one makes us invincible. Let's see what else. And the comet's the best one. Yeah, that's the comment. Oh crap! Okay. <laughs> and then we got Pong. Pong Breakout. So that's the idea of the game. I mean, we should really. The idea is to. It's like, what if every arcade game was like Breakout? Oh crap. I got that part down. Okay. And we got Pong is the first one. And we proved that a lot last stream. And I think that's pretty cool. We made it pretty fast. And now it's really terrifying, I suppose. In the good sense. I love this idea. Yeah. Oh yeah. Now we're talking. Let's see if I can get away. Okay, yeah, I did. It's really fast-paced, this one. Uh, in contrast, the Tetris, which one that we used, the red ball is looking so powerful. Yeah, the comment was awesome. And we even increased the size of it last stream. That was pretty cool. So, Tetris is the one that we planned today. And uh, I don't know if it's 100%, but it's getting there, I think. So we implemented that, and we had to restructure a lot of stuff to make sure that... Uh... Oh crap, that was close. I think we're gonna lose. 
use that. Okay. That was a nice move. Okay, yeah, I did it. Okay. Yeah, see? The collision? The collision is still, still wrong. We're gonna reveal that next stream for sure. And I think that's the only thing that's really missing. Maybe add a little bit of screen shake. Uh, let's see, we got that guy. Oh, good guy, good guy. Yeah, I still have to work on this level a little bit. Uh, yeah, I'm not entirely sure. I'm gonna have to play that for a while. Just got an idea, maybe it's already in. Shoot! Oh, nice, that was pretty cool. Okay. Yeah, with the collision problem, it's, it's kind of not too fun. We got two guys. Oh, actually, I'm just getting the same shape now because we commented that code out to go back to the way it was. And these guys rotate. So, yeah. Oh, I think I'm gonna lose it. Yeah, I lost. But we got to the rotating guys, which were pretty cool. And we found a bug that we can fix before we end the stream. Uh, so in the level, let's go like random int. Uh, what's that? Let's go this this thing. Yeah. In a level or specific play mode, the walls come closer with time passing by. That's really cool. Oh, man, the stream dropped, I think. It says zero kilobytes per second. I think I lost my internet connection. And I did. Well... That's a bummer, but I was about to finish anyway. But uh, I'm gonna note Ivan's idea, so I can play around with this next stream as well. Okay, I think we are back. No, we're not back. We're not back. Okay, so yeah, <laughs> I'm just going to finish the stream. Uh, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed and learned a lot. We did a lot of cool stuff today. If you want to follow me, uh, just subscribe to my YouTube channel where you can see all the crazy stuff, all the crazy stuff I'm doing. Not only the this live stream, but also the programming series, the tutorial series that I just started. Uh, that's more beginner friendly and it's more step by step approach. That's pretty cool. And you can download the game and the source code for free on each iOS. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. See you then.